So welcome everyone for this edition of the BRAG, Brazilian Algebraic Geometry Seminar. And today it is my pleasure to introduce uh, Inder Kaur from Puki Rio, but she's giving uh, her talk remotely from the UK. And she's going to tell us about questions on the cohomology ring of moduli spaces of stable locally free sheaves on curves. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you to the organizers, and I should also apologize, um, uh, perhaps for not uh, being able to take this invitation last year. My internet was really bad, and I wasn't able to do the talk then, uh, and I was also not very good with attending uh, the seminar, but uh, yeah, hopefully this semester I'll really make up. So thank you. Um, so I'm going to start off with things that I think everybody here knows, and uh, even, I mean, I, I did a course uh, on moduli spaces of uh, stable bundles on, uh, on a smooth curve and Joao attended. So I know that Joao is a good, uh, a good uh, parameter to have because, you know, if he understands what's going on, then it's, it's uh, probably okay, it's clear. Uh, but if at any point something is not clear, please feel free to stop me. So I will always be over C. Uh, I will start off with an X a smooth curve of genus G greater than or equal to two. And uh, I fix integers R greater than or equal to two and D uh, co prime to R. Now for F a vector bundle of rank R and degree D on X, I denote by uh, mu F, uh, this is called the slope of F, um, the quotient D over R. Okay, so. This is how it's defined. And uh, the determinant of F is just the top edge uh, uh, product uh, of, uh, of F. Um, and the vector bundle F of rank R and degree D is called slope semi-stable. So it's slope stable. If for any uh, proper sub uh, vector bundle E uh, of F, I have that the slope of E is strictly less than the slope of F and it is uh, semi-stable if it is less than or equal to. Okay, um, so this is a very old classical uh, object, the moduli space of uh, stable vector bundles on X of rank R and degree D. And uh, it is a smooth projective variety of dimension R squared, uh, G minus one plus one. So, uh, the moduli space is a fine moduli space. This is a very nice property because this means that there exists a universal vector bundle uh, E over MXR D cross X, such that any stable rank two vector bundle F on X is a fiber of E at some closed point S and MXR D. So that means that actually if I have a universal bundle, I kind of have, I, I mean, I know all the bundles. I know a lot about the, about the moduli space. Um, because for any other bundle, I just take it as the, as the pullback to some close point. Okay, so now let L be a line bundle of degree D. Um, and this is going to be always co-prime to the rank. And I'm actually always going to be in rank two. So, um, and uh, I denote by MXRL, the moduli space of rank R stable vector bundles with determinant L. It is a sub variety of MXRD of dimension R squared minus one, uh, G minus one. Okay, so these are all very classical things. This uh, I think more or less everybody here should know. Uh, but now I come to things that maybe people already know, but you know they don't uh, know it very well. So I will just recall it. So in general. Okay, so this is a very general definition. A pure hot structure of weight N um, consists of a finitely generated free abelian group, so a lattice, uh, which is denoted HC, and a decomposition of the complexification of the lattice. So the decomposition has to satisfy this rule that HPQ is, H, uh, is the uh, conjugate of um, HQP. So, this property is called the uh, is, is called Hodge symmetry. It's very nice, and uh, basically, if I have uh, a lattice and this decomposition of the complexification, then I say that I have a pure Hodge structure of weight n. Okay, so um, okay, 
And this is equivalent to actually giving a filtration of the lattice, so of the complexification of the lattice. And uh, maybe Joao, who's a PhD student, uh, can work this out, that why are the two definitions equivalent? So, but in general, this is, uh, I mean, this is very easy to work out. Okay, so, uh, so this is a very general definition. You do not need to, you know, it, it doesn't say you can just have a pure hot structure. Okay, but uh, let's do some examples. So if I take any smooth projective complex variety Y, and um, I can define a pure hot structure on Y. How? I take for my lattice the, um, the nth uh, cohomology of Y, singular cohomology of Y uh, with Z coefficients. And uh, if it has torsion, I just mod out the torsion. So I get a nice lattice. Okay. Now, uh, what about the decomposition of the complexification? This is also somewhat, you know, God given. Okay, it's not God given, it comes from Hodge's theorem, but uh, it's, it's not hard. Uh, that you have that the, uh, the summons HPQ are just going to be the uh, cute cohomology of Y uh, with respect to the sheaf of differentials, the P forms. Okay, so if you take this, you will be able to define a decomposition. So in particular, you will be able to have a, uh, a pure hot structure. Now, I already said that X is going to be a smooth curve. And I also told you smooth and projective and um, MXRD and MXRL are also smooth projective. Uh, so they all admit pure hot structures. Okay. Is that okay so far? Okay. Uh, okay, so these are, so a, a very, very classical result is that um, a smooth projective curve X is determined up to isomorphism by its principally polarized Jacobian. Now, you know that the Jacobian can also be thought of as the moduli space of rank one degree zero bundles on X. Okay, so this is a very classical result and I think there are quite a few proofs of this. Uh, I think this was maybe proven somewhere in 1913 or something, um, but yeah, I could be wrong with the dates, but essentially it's very, very old. And this moduli space, by the way, this uh, moduli space of stable bundles uh, on, a, on a smooth curve, uh, this, I didn't say it was constructed by, uh, by Mumford and it was in the 60s. So one very obvious question that they asked, um, actually Mumford and Newstead, is that, uh, so we can say that a curve is, by classical Torelli, we can say that a curve is determined up to my isomorphism by its principally polarized Jacobian. Okay, and the Jacobian is the modelized space of rank one degree zero bundles on X. Can we say more? Can we say that the same kind of thing happens also for higher rank? I.e., that if I take the moduli space of rank two stable vector bundles uh, with fixed odd degree determinant, uh, then can I say that yes, the curve is also determined by that? And uh, this was actually proven in 1969 uh, by Mumford and Newstead that yes, this is true. And then there were generalizations to this for any rank by uh, Narasimhan Ramanan and Shurin. So, uh, as I said, please stop me if there are any questions. Uh, so again, so I, I told you that if I have a smooth projective variety uh, over C, I can have a pure hot structure. And I told you what the definition of a pure hot structure is. I also said that it is equivalent to having this filtration for the complexification. So it's very natural, the following definition that I can define the kth intermediate Jacobian of this as this. Um, so that just kind of follows, uh, but you know, you have to maybe show some things to see that this is really a complex torus. And this is a very nice result. And um, what Mumford Newstead did is that they showed that there exists an isomorphism of pure hot structures uh, between the H1 HC and H3 of MX12, uh, H3 of the um, uh, singular cohomology with Z coefficients of the moduli space. And then as a result of this, they got, I mean, it follows almost immediately, uh, that uh, the Jacobian of the curve is isomorphic 
to the second intermediate Jacobian of the moduli space. And moreover, it maps the polarization to the polarization. Now, I didn't really say too much about the polarization of the uh, of the kth intermediate Jacobian, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's not hard. It comes from a bilinear form, and you you can show that it always exists. And this result really also says you know that there is always going the I mean the classical Jacobian is is principally polarized. That I think everybody knows. So here, what they're saying is that that data divisor goes to the polarization of the uh, of the second intermediate Jacobian of the moduli space. So it's very nice. These are both abelian varieties, and they have a very nice uh, isomorphism. Um, and I'm stressing this a little bit because I'm going to come back to this later on. So okay. So this these were you know classical questions, but then you can also ask very very basic, very topological questions like. Um, we know what is the you know the dimension of uh, mx2l, and uh, I, I gave you the formula. And actually, I'm just going to always be in rank two, so for me, it's going to be three g minus three. Uh, I'll just denote it by n for short. So, if I consider the rational cohomology ring that is singular cohomology with the uh, q coefficients, what can I say? I mean, so. What can I say about this? Uh, do I know what are the generators? Do I know the relations? Do I know the, the Betty numbers? What do I know? So these are again, very, very basic topological questions. So the previous question we had was a bit geometric, um, but you know, these are again, very, very basic. And so, I think uh, I came to the scene very late, but it seems that in the 70s, 80s, uh, 90s, even there were lots and lots of people working on this modulized space of uh, stable bundles um, on a curve. And these questions were open and uh, they, were, uh, they were really being worked on by many, many people. Um, so the Mumford Newstead isomorphism gave us a, so this was, I also, I Stress that this was an isomorphism of pure hot structures. So there's a lot of Hodge theory going on here. And um, the thing is that you have a symplectic basis of, uh, of H1XC, and you look at what is the image of the basis under this map. This is an isomorphism. And um, Newstead showed that actually, if you take that basis, and there are additionally two other elements, one alpha in H2, um, of of um, uh, the, the second uh, singular cohomology of, of the moduli space and beta in H4, such that they actually generate this ring. So there are in, in total two sheet plus two generators and um, you know, he, he, he gave explicit forms. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll come to this later a little bit as to how he does this. Um, but so he settled the question of what are the generators? Now Mumford had conjectured that a certain set of relations uh, is going to be complete. And these are the relations and actually a lot of people worked on it. So I am, I apologize if I'm not, you know, mentioning everybody, but um, uh, actually it was done by, um, by King, by Newstead, by uh, Solomon Herrera, by um, uh, Zagier, by many people. So, you know, a, a lot of people worked on these things. So I don't mention all of them, but yeah, um, there, there are more names than I'm mentioning. Okay, so Mumford conjectured that a certain set of relations is going to be complete. And then uh, this was open for quite a long time. And then Kirwan proved that actually proved the conjecture. Uh, and she used methods from gauge theory, and she also gave a decomposition for the ring. So uh, it was sort of, I mean, I, I cannot really give the precise form for the, for the decomposition because it, I mean, I really need to uh, maybe uh, put more notation, but um, yeah, okay. Uh, so, I mean, the, the thing to take from this is that, uh, yes, we have a very explicit form for what are the generators, 
and what are the relations and we can mod out and we can really work out the dimension of this uh, of this ring okay and uh, Newstead also gave the betty numbers so and then um i already mentioned this that we have a we have a pure hot structure from mx2l okay so if we have a pure hot structure that means that we can write it as a uh, as a as a decomposition uh, for any i for any n and um, another question that you can ask is that um, supposing i consider the 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 free abelian group generated by the reducible subvarieties of mx 2 l okay this is uh, denoted cp so and this is the this uh, the cycles the p cycles of uh, of mx 2 l uh, and I'm not going to really give this map of here because I don't know how many, I mean, it, I, I will need to introduce a lot of things and most likely a lot of people already know this. So the question is, when is the cycle class map surjective? So if I take, I, uh, I, I take this, um, so actually, for, you know, this is, okay, if, if you know this, you know that this is asking if the Hodge conjecture is true for this moduli space. That's it. And in fact, it is not just asking the integral Hodge conjecture, but the rational uh, uh, Hodge conjecture, or what's just called the Hodge conjecture. And um, so the question is that, uh, is this true? And again, this is this was very natural because we have the Hodge decomposition, we know the cycles, we know the classes, we know the Hodge classes. So, okay, so, you know, what can we say? And um, there's a theorem by Balaji King Newstead that actually uh, for MX2L, if the curve is very general, uh, then the Hodge conjecture holds. So why very general? Well, because uh, I'm sure people here already know this, that the Hodge conjecture holds for uh, the Jacobian of a curve if it is very general. We do not know in general, like if it's not general, if, the, uh, if it is true that the Hodge conjecture is true for the Jacobian. So it, in a way, it's a sort of um, condition carried forward, you know, because their proof uses the fact that for the Jacobian, you need it very general. And okay, maybe for the PhD students, I should just say. So general is that if I look at a set and I remove uh, finitely many proper closed subsets, the elements that remain, they are general. Very general is if I remove not finitely, but countably many uh, closed subsets. So the elements that remain are general. So in a way, it's, um, it's quite a strong condition, you know, uh, but okay, so they cannot show it for any, any uh, curve X, uh, because it's not true even for any curve X for the case of Jacobian, uh, but they can say it for, for again, X being very general. And they use the proof of the Jacobian. Okay, so that settles also the question of is this um, cycle class map surjective? Yes. Okay, uh, so this was generalized again to arbitrary rank by Biswas and Narasimhan. Uh, and several people again used different methods to give Hodge Poincare polynomial for this moduli space. So, so I, I mean, I think everybody knows what are the Betty numbers, and I think I also said it. Uh, so you're just looking at the uh, at the dimension of uh, of HI, um, the, the singular cohomology with C coefficients. Um, but you know that, I mean, if you have this hot structure, you also have a Hodge decomposition. So it also makes sense to ask what are the what is the dimension of the individual summons, you know, in the in the uh, in the Hodge decomposition. And the Hodge Poincare polynomial basically is a polynomial where the uh, coefficients give you these dimensions. And here again, uh, maybe I haven't said it here, but several people worked on it. And this was uh, this was again used. You know, there were people, uh, Bosley, Vizale, Raman, and um, uh, Leticia, Guion. Many many people worked on it, and they worked on it using very different methods. So some people uh, have worked on these things using methods from 
number theory, some from gauge theory, and some from algebraic geometry. So it's it's not, uh, I mean, all the proofs are not, you know, coming from algebraic geometry. But yeah, so this is known. And um, so, yeah, okay. So are there any questions? Are people listening? Maybe I should. So as I said, this is the first time I'm giving a Zoom talk. So I have no idea what's going on. Like if people are, have put me on mute and gone away or. Um... We're, we are here in the, I know how strange it feels. <laughs> yeah, it feels really strange. This is the first time I'm doing it. And I'm like, uh, okay, uh, because normally, you know, I can tell when, um, people have stopped uh, listening. They start opening their laptops and start reading the news or whatever. But in this, uh, it's very hard to determine if I'm going too fast, too slow. Um, but yeah, so if I'm, if I'm going too fast, just, uh, just slow me down. Okay, so, uh, so, so basically the reason I stated so many results is that what I wanted to say is that uh, this is a classical object and almost everything that you could ask about it, geometric, topological, Hodge theoretic, has been asked and actually has been answered as well. So, you know, when it comes to the smooth curve, there isn't so much more left. I mean, of course, there are many other aspects you can look at. I mean, there are people doing a lot of things in Higgs bundles still, and, but uh, the first questions that occur to you have all been answered. So uh, that's kind of bad for me because, you know, as I said, I came to the scene very late. Um, but uh, what happens if I was to replace this curve, this smooth curve X, uh, with a irreducible nodal curve and asked all these questions again about the Hodge theory, about the topology, about uh, classical Torelli, about the, about the Mumford Newsted's uh, Torelli, uh, you know, what do I get? So that's actually the the main uh, topic of my talk is, uh, you know, I just wanted to give a kind of a, a short history. Um, and, um, okay, so uh, the thing is that if you have a singular variety, okay, um, any singular variety, it, it doesn't have to be a curve, uh, you have that there exists a moduli space of Gizikar semi-stable, uh, torsion free sheaves or in, in, in general, pure sheaves. Um, so you, you can, you know, you can have a moduli space of uh, physical stable, physical semi-stable sheaves, pure sheaves for a singular variety. That's not a problem, okay? Um, and this was constructed already in the curve case by Sishadri. And um, okay, maybe for the PhD students, I should say a few things. So. I don't know. Maybe you know. Maybe this is uh, this brings people back. Uh, I mean, they uh, uh, they think a little bit. But why do you even if you if you take um, yeah, this is a good exercise for Joao. Even if you take a curve with many components, just a singular curve with uh, several components, uh, it is possible that you have a you know you have a vector bundle which has a sub bundle. So even if the vector bundle has the same rank on all the components, it's possible that it has a sub bundle which has different rank on different components. So, you know, the question is, is the definition of, uh, I mean, an exercise you can look at is that, is the definition of slope semi-stability really a good definition when you're trying to look at moduli spaces of uh, sheaves for singular varieties? just even something single, you know, uh, a simple uh, singular curve with many components. So this is maybe a, you know, a good uh, exercise to look into, uh, but yeah, I won't go too much into this. So my point is just that you do have a moduli space, but the moduli space need not just consider vector bundles. It may not, need not even just consider torsion free sheaves, consider something more uh, pure sheaves. Um, and it uh, certainly, I mean, you can do things. Uh, but it's different. So 
but I won't be talking so much about general varieties, but yeah, I mean, as a, you know, in general, you do have this. So that's not an issue. Uh, the issues come a bit later. So if I take X naught to be an irreducible modal curve, and as I said, I want to kind of have a look at the moduli space of vector bundles uh, or some kind of bundles on this uh, irreducible modal curve, say, uh, with fixed determinant. And uh, I want to understand if I can ask all those questions that I had for the smooth case. So the very first question is, do I have a moduli space of sheaves with fixed determinant? So the even, even more, more basic question is, how do you define determinant um, for a torsion-free sheaf? So as I said, if, when you go to something uh, singular, irreducible model or, or more, uh, you will, it will not be sufficient to have vector bundles. And you will not get something compact. So you'll have to add torsion-free sheaves and uh, in some cases even even more things so the question is that if i take torsion free sheaves how do i define determinant for a torsion free sheaf on an irreducible modal curve it's a very basic question and um, the first idea is that i don't see what's the problem you just take the wedge as usual um what we did in in, in the smooth case and the problem with that is that it may pick up torsion. So this is, I mean, the determinant is uh, in general a line bundle. Here it might not even be a torsion-free rank one bundle, you know. Um, and the compactifications of, of these kind of things normally, uh, you know, consist of actually adding torsion-free rank one bundles and things for, for Jacobians. But I mean, I, I won't go into that. But you know, just a simple thing is that taking the normal wedge uh, wouldn't work. Okay, so second idea is just forget about the node. And I know this sounds a bit strange, but in a sense it works. So, so we have a moduli space for an irreducible nodal curve uh, given by Sishadri. And um, um, moduli space of uh, uh, stable um, uh, sheaves. And uh, the question is that now how do I define, you know, how do I, how do I, how do I define a determinant and consider the moduli space with fixed determinant? And for that, what we do, uh, or not me, but uh, what Nagarat Sishadri suggested is that uh, you take your irreducible nodal curve and you take some line bundle of odd degree on uh, you fix it uh, on on x zero, and uh, you do the following: you say that a torsion free sheaf on x zero of rank two has determinant L. If it you know when I take the wedge, it's really uh, it's it's really isomorphic to L. Okay, so there exists a non-trivial morphism from the normal determinant of F to L. This uh, odd degree line bundle. Uh, which is an isomorphism everywhere outside the node. So that's what I meant by, you know, this is a kind of, you somewhat forget the node, but I mean, this is a, a bit heuristic way of looking at it, but. And the thing is that uh, using this definition, actually you can have a moduli space and it, it does work. Uh, so uh, Seattle soon uh, constructed the moduli space, which basically looks at exactly these uh, torsion tree sheaves in the in the uh, moduli space that Sichadri had constructed previously. Yeah. Okay. And um, very nice, no problem. But you can sense from the way the definition goes that maybe this is okay. This also has dimension three g minus uh, three, but you can sense a problem coming, and this is that this may not be functorial. You know, I mean, the way the definition goes, it seems uh, it's it's nice, but it seems a little bit artificial. You expect something to go wrong, right? Uh, so yes, the problem is that this is not functorial. But actually, uh, Usha Bosle uh, did give a functorial description of this, but she kind of used uh, GPPs. So I think there are certainly some people in the audience that know these things. Uh, so basically, GPPs is that 
uh, what you do is that you have your you have your nodal curve and you look at the normalization of the nodal curve and now you are kind of thinking of you have your nodal curve you have a, a line bundle fixed on it and you want to see you know what torsion free sheaves you can have or or uh, bundles you can have with that uh, uh, with that uh, line bundle as determinant and you kind of go back to the normalization and there you look at things that have determinant the pullback of the determinant you want okay and then you have to give some datum and some gluing datum so that you know when you uh, get to the node you are identifying the fibers in such a way that you get uh, the bundles that you want uh, so it's it's a bit complicated and i didn't want to go into this because it you know, it might get confusing for people. So, but I think there are quite a few people in the audience that probably already know this. So yes, there is a punctorial description and the punctorial description uses uh, GPPs. Okay, so my goal was or uh, that uh, I want to ask all the geometric, topological and Hodge theoretic questions for UX 0 to F, okay? And now I know that this is very nice. I mean, it's in, in the sense that this modified space exists and it is functorial. Uh, and I know the dimension as well. So, okay, so I should start working with this. Um, and then I get a problem. Actually, I get many problems, but one of the first problems is that this is not fine, okay? So in the beginning, I told you that I have, fine means that I have a universal bundle, which kind of, I mean, if I have the universal bundle, I know all the other bundles because it's just the pullback to some close point of the universal bundle, you know. So I have a, I have a lot of information. And um, you're thinking, yes, but, you know, is, is, is that useful? Yes, it's, it's very, very useful because in a lot of the proofs that uh, a lot of the statements that I just stated earlier about, the, you know, the Hodge theoretic questions, the topological questions, I uh, actually in the proofs, if you look at it, they really explicitly use the universal bundle. So for example, I, I told you here um, that Newstead gave the generators. Yes, so the generators here, uh, this alpha, beta, they're not you know, just some elements. They're very, very specific elements that are coming as uh, when I look at the churn classes of this universal bundle. So when you look at the proof, you, you really see that, yes, we, you know, you can't just, okay, now that you have a nice moduli space, say UX0 to L, uh, you can't just get all these articles and just, you know, um, just do a little uh, typo change and, uh, and, and get the results because your UX0 is not fine. And that's what they're really using in order to get the results. Okay, I hope that uh, uh, convinces you a bit. Uh, but uh, the question is that, okay, if it is not fine, never mind. Why don't we do this? Uh, we know a lot of things for the smooth curve, right? So we do have a lot of information for the smooth curve. We don't have enough information for the nodal curve. We can't just you know, exclusively do things for the nodal curve because we don't have this uh, this universal bundle. So why don't we do this? We put it in a family and we use the information that we have, like generators, relations, um, the, the, the Mumford Newstead, et cetera, for the smooth curve. We use that to get all that for the, for the nodal curve, okay? So basically this is a, this is a very good idea. And so, yes, the, so here, here, what you really need is that you don't just want a moduli space, okay, uh, with fixed determinant. You want a relative moduli space with fixed determinant, as in um, fixing the determinant of the sheaves. So you let chi be a family of smooth curves, degenerating to uh, x zero, and uh, l the lift of the line bundle l. So you had your line bundle l on x zero, and you lift it to the whole family, and now. Uh, actually, uh, Seattle Sun showed that for X0 irreducible, there exists a relative version of the, of the moduli space that he had. So this UX0 to L can come as a special uh, fiber of this other moduli space, relative moduli space, U chi to L, okay? And this is kind of important because previously when I have uh, discussed, uh, you know, these kind of results, sometimes people get very, um, 
get very excited um, as to, you know, can you have this? And um, yes, you can have this. This is a very specific result. So in general, if I was to look at uh, a family of smooth varieties degenerating to an, um, you know, singular variety, I may not have a relative uh, moduli space. No, I cannot possibly have maybe a, a relative moduli space with the uh, of sheaves, even without fixed determinant, let alone with fixed determinant. But yes, so in this case, it does work. I, I can have this moduli space, I can have it with fixed determinant. And actually, uh, you, you will run into trouble if you were to replace irreducible nodal with something which has many components. Then maybe, you know, as I mean, so far as I know, there aren't uh, good uh, specialization. Um, I mean, there isn't a good relative version such that it you know, on the, on the fibers, it gives you uh, what you want. Okay, so if I replace X0 irreducible noodle with something else, uh, this result of Seattle-Sun does not hold. Okay, but for an irreducible noodle curve, it does hold. And the reason I'm stressing this point is that previously, you know, people get very, uh, they're already surprised that this is, uh, this is happening, but yes, it does, it is, it is a correct result. It's uh, published in uh, many, many years ago in 2003 by uh, in the Asian Journal of Maths and uh, it's, it's, it's completely valid. So, but yes, there are problems if you go to even singular curves with many components. Okay, so that is one thing, uh, but uh, UX0, what we know about UX0-2L, the other thing is that although it is irreducible, it is not smooth. Okay, so I told you that uh, UX0, I mean, when I had uh, MX2L, I had something which was smooth, which was projective and was fine and everything was good. Okay, this is not fine, but uh, I have even more problems. It is not, uh, it is not smooth, okay? Okay, so what do you do? What is the solution? I mean, so that means if I, uh, if I take a relative family and I use the uh, the result that uh, Seattle Sun has given me, this U uh, U guy to L, I still have problems because the special fiber of this moduli space is quite singular. So that creates issues for me because in the proofs that I use or things, uh, I really need the singularities to be good. And here I'm not even sure I totally understand all the similarities. So. Uh, you know, there are, there are some uh, things to, I mean, that I cannot really work with. Okay. So the solution uh, is that instead of looking at the moduli space of Sun or whoever, uh, before even maybe, uh, Sishadri, I, uh, I look at Gizikar's moduli space with some changes. So what I mean by that is that, uh, I think for most people in the audience, they probably know this, but so the Gizikers moduli space is, I told you that to construct a compactification of the moduli space of stable bundles, uh, you put, I mean, of bundles when something is singular, you put torsion free sheaves, you put maybe pure sheaves, but uh, actually what you can also do is look at vector bundles on curves that are semi-stably equivalent to X0. Okay, so this is the this is the idea of Gizikar, uh, and in Gizikar's moduli space, actually, he doesn't really look at fixed determinant um, for sheaves. He's just looking at a different compactification uh, for the uh, for the moduli space of uh, stable bundles with fixed rank and degree. Okay, so what I mean by uh, different curves is that uh, I have a curve xi is said to be semi stably equivalent to x0 if it is of the form x0 normalized and a union of p1s. Okay, so I, I cannot draw it here, but uh, you can imagine it, I think. Um, so the question is that now instead of looking at, okay, so why am I so interested in this one? Uh, the the main advantage of this is that if I was to, instead of looking at the relative um, moduli space constructed by Sun, if I was to look at the mo moduli space here, okay, where I, so there is, um, there has been a bit of work, as I said, Gizikar didn't really work on the case of fixed determinant, but uh, uh, Thaddeus did, Abe did, Nagar Sichadri did, 
and uh, and and Sun also did. So uh, there was you know uh, a lot of work done with fixed determinant after Gisipel. So if I take a family of smooth curves degenerating to X zero and L the lift of the line bundle, then I know that I have a relative moduli space uh, of uh, vector bundles uh, with a fixed determinant. Okay. And as I said, this is this is very nice. This is just this moduli space just consists of vector bundles. Okay. Uh, and the other th thing is that if I look at the at the smooth fibers, okay. So I, here I am I am taking this open disk. Um, and if I was to uh, if I was to look at the fibers other than uh, the central fiber, so other than zero and any point t in in here other than zero. Um, then the moduli space for that point is the physical moduli space, the specialization of that is isomorphic to the one for, uh, coming from Sun. And it is actually, uh, I didn't write here, but it is actually isomorphic to just the normal moduli space because other than the central fiber, all the fibers are, are smooth. So I get exactly the moduli space of uh, bundles on a smooth curve. Okay, so this is uh, this is very nice. Okay, I, I wrote it here. Okay, um, but the main reason for considering this moduli space as opposed to the soon one uh, is that it is it has good singularities. Okay, so the central fiber here is a simple normal crossings divisor, and it is uh, uh, reducible with the Two smooth components, so it's sits something like this, and um, and this is something I like for you know computational purposes. Um, I will explain that a little later. So and moreover, uh, I mean, how how are these two moduli spaces? Um, how are they connected? They're connected by uh, the fact that there is a proper morphism. Uh, from the special fiber of the physical moduli space to the uh, uh, to the Sun's moduli space, just for the um, uh, just for the irreducible modal curve. So the so among the special fibers, so the special fiber is is the irreducible modal curve, and there here I have something which has bad singularities, and here I have something uh, sorry here I have something which has good singularities, and I I, I use that. And here I have something which has bad singularities. The thing is, I wanted to understand this, uh, but you know, this one is much much nicer to work with. And I have this proper morphism. So in the end, I get a lot of information about this just by actually first getting the information for this. So this is uh, this is a very fairy tale version, but essentially this is it. Okay, good. I am uh, done. Okay, now uh, replacing x by x0, we can ask all the questions, is there a Torelli type result for x0? And uh, this was done much, much before. Yes, so if, if you take an irreducible modal curve, uh, then Nami Kava showed that uh, there is a Torelli type result, uh, provided uh, x is in, you know, the, the normalization of x is a non hyperelliptic curve of genus g greater than or equal to four. And you have to define the Jacobian a little differently. Okay, so this is called the generalized Jacobian. Um, and uh, yeah, maybe this is another good exercise for uh, for PhD students is that how is this dif uh, this uh, di uh, this Jacobian different from the Jacobian I gave in the beginning? So you know, then then you start to see something subtle. Um, but okay, so this was already done by, uh, by Nami Kava. Um, but then I can ask, uh, what about higher rank? Are the equivalents of Mumford Newstead for X zero? And the answer is yes. And what I have to do is that again, I have to define, uh, you know, it, there's a bit of difference in the, in the definition of Jacobian uh, as there was for Nami Kava. And um, what I can show is that there exist complex manifolds uh, such that, okay, so here there's, a, I know there is a bit of notation and it looks a little bit uh, scary, but it's, it's, it's okay. So what you're doing is the following, okay? 
you have your open uh, you have your open disk and um, all the fibers over this so you have this this uh, big uh, family of curves guide to your open disk and all the fibers other than um, other than the central fiber uh, are smooth at the same time you also have this relative moduli space from Gizekar uh, and uh, Sun and all uh, with fixed determinant over uh, over this open disk and the and all the fibers of that are also smooth. They are exactly the the, the moduli space of sheets uh, of a stable bundles on a smooth curve, um, except for the central fiber. The central fiber uh, is singular with two components, and it's it's kind of nice. Um, uh, it's it's uh, SNCD, but okay. So you have two families. One is the family of curves. One is the family of the of the moduli spaces. Okay, and the thing is that. When you're looking at these intermediate Jacobians, you can define these, you know, the, the normal uh, definition of intermediate Jacobians that you have, you can get that. And then you want to somehow extend it to the whole thing. Okay, so first you define it for without the, um, uh, the, uh, without the central fiber. So, you know, you have your punctured disk. So I didn't really uh, say this here. Uh, but, and then you kind of show that it extends to the whole thing, to the whole disk. And then um, the thing to show is that the central fiber of the, of the, of this extension is really the or extension of the intermediate Jacobians is really the Jacobian of the central fiber. Okay, so this is, uh, I, I hope it, it makes some sense. Uh, so in a way, it's saying it specializes well, um, and this is this is kind of hard to show, but but it does. Um, and the same thing happens again for the family of intermediate Jacobians for the moduli space. Again, you show you have it first for all the smooth things because you anyway have it for the smooth things. Then you use the theory of neuron models to get it on the whole disk, and then you want to show that really what you have uh, when you specialize to the uh, to the uh, central point, uh, the central fiber, you will really get what you expect. Okay, so what I've given here is what I will get uh, for J1x0 and for J2g0. So I, I understand if, uh, if you're not very familiar with this, this is a little bit uh, intimidating, but you know. And the point is that there exists an isomorphism. Um, so now I wanted to get an isomorphism, you remember, uh, for for Mumford Newsted, I had an isomorphism between the first um, Jacobian of the curve and the second intermediate Jacobian of the moduli space. So that's what I want to get. So now I've looked at families of intermediate Jacobians, both for the family of curves and for the family of the of, uh, of moduli spaces, and I have gotten isomorphisms there. And I know that the, each of the families have this nice specialization property, and I can show that the central fibers now have an isomorphism, but they have an isomorphism as semi-abelian varieties, okay? So this is, again, another important thing that uh, in the beginning, I said that when I'm looking at uh, the Kth intermediate Jacobian for any smooth projective uh, variety over C, I stress that this is a complex torus. Yes, these things are not complex torus. Okay, so for the for the smooth fibers, yes, the the Jacobians will again be exactly the Jacobians that you have for the smooth fibers anyway, and they are going to be complex to right? But for the central fibers, okay, these are not going to be um, what I've defined here. Yes, these are not going to be complex to right? Okay, they are not abelian varieties; they are semi-abelian varieties, and I stress this because. Previously, when I've given talks, people get very excited about this. Am I saying that now I have this uh, abelian variety for the, you know, uh, for the Jacobian of something which is singular? No, no. So if, uh, if, if you don't know what is a semi-abelian variety, it's just, a, it's just an extension uh, by C star of an abelian variety, okay? So for example, J1x0 fits into this kind of um, exact sequence. So if you think of it as something which is like a C star vibration over something which is a billion. Okay, so this is a billion uh, and uh, this is not. 
Okay. So now uh, this, uh, along with this result, along with the uh, with the Mumford Newstead, you can uh, uh, so, sorry, along with the uh, Nam Namitava thing, uh, you can get the normal. Um, you can get the relative Mumford Newstead for x being uh, x zero being irreducible normal. So then you can start asking more topological questions. So for example, I had uh, we had looked at the uh, at the rational cohomology ring of uh, MX2L uh, with Q coefficients. Uh, and we had asked, what are the generators? What are the relations? What are the Betty numbers? Hodge quantum, polynomial, et cetera, uh, the Hodge conjecture. And we asked exactly all the same questions again. Uh, and here we should stress that the Hodge conjecture does not make sense uh, for something singular. So you really ask for the desingularization of the variety. Okay, and what we show is that, um, so this is actually, most of it is joint work with Ananya Dan. Uh, he was uh, uh, at IMPA for some time. And some of it is also joint work with Surat Nabasu. Uh, so for this, uh, so the Mumford Newstead was, uh, uh, was with both of them. And this was is just with Ananya. Uh, we show that there exist elements uh, gamma i in uh, H3 and uh, alpha in uh, H2 and beta in H4 and another element in H6. So if you were paying attention, you remember that when I had the uh, generators, I said what the generators are by uh, Newstead, they were coming from this morphism uh, of isomorphism of uh, pure hot structures that he had in the Mumford Newstead. Uh, and um, and I said that they were two G plus two generators, and uh, this the alpha beta came as um, as the you know uh, they were uh, given using using the churn classes of the, the universal bundle. Okay, uh, so here what happens is that we take all those uh, generators that uh, Newstead had, and now when we look at this the the special fiber, the irreducible nodal curve, what we show is that somehow the generators for us are coming as degeneration of the generators that were there for Newstead, okay? Because we don't have any universal bundle. Um, so, you know, but we kind of go using this uh, relative moduli spaces, we kind of go around it. And we just show that our generators come as degeneration of the generators uh, that Newstead gave. And again, we can show a generalized form of Mumford's conjecture, i.e. we can describe the complete set of relations. So you, I, I said that there was this uh, uh, relations that Mumford had conjectured, which uh, Kirwan proved, et cetera. Yeah, so here again, what we do is that we, um, we use this relative uh, moduli spaces and we use a certain tools, which I will describe right in the end, uh, where we can kind of use, you know, um, we can use all the results that they had uh, in their case just by looking at degenerations. Okay. So, and then we can also describe the Hodge point variable in Okay. Um, finally, we can also, I had said that uh, the Hodge conjecture is known for a very general smooth curve uh, by Balaji King Newstead. And what we do is that we again use their result. And we say that if we let x0 to be an irreducible nodal curve, uh, such that its normalization is very general, then the Hodge conjecture holds for a desingularization of ux0 to l. Okay, so ux0 to l, as I've been stressing, uh, is something quite singular and quite bad. So, and the Hodge conjecture certainly doesn't make any sense for this, but we showed, you know, using the Hodge, con uh, Hodge conjecture already shown for smooth curves by Balaji King used it, that, um, the hot conjecture again holds for the desingularization of this. Okay, so I'm stating a lot of results, I know, uh, and you're thinking, but what is actually going on? Um, so the thing is that uh, if you look at the articles um, that these results are coming from, they look very, very technical. And uh, I wasn't really sure how to present that because if I try to present that, then I'm in a rush to kind of you know, 
rush the first part and not say exactly where the questions are coming from or what's the setting or what are the different moduli spaces, how they connect. So it's better maybe that I give a more general talk and, you know, since I cannot even see you. So, um, and motivate the questions rather than the answers, you know. And I would be very happy, by the way, if people want to um, next week or, or perhaps in a few months to give a more general talk on one of, I mean, to give a more specialized talk on one of these results, okay? Um, but essentially, all these results have a core strategy. They're not all, I mean, uh, dependent. No, they're not dependent on each other, but they have a core strategy and they have some very core tools that, you know, uh, keep getting used. So one of the problems I stated throughout was that UX012 is not fine and it has bad singularities. The solution was to use the relative visitors moduli space with fixed determinant, okay, and connect the hot structure on H0 uh, on um, uh, GX012 uh, with the hot structure um, for uh, the hit, uh, hit star of the GXT. So these were the smooth fibers, right? So using the idea of using this uh, relative version was that you knew a lot of things for the smooth fibers. So you just try to use degeneration and uh, and uh, get things for the singular fiber, and so this was very you know uh, hand wavy. What do I mean by degeneration? What do I mean by connecting the hot structure? So I'll I'll get to that. But um, one of the other reasons was that although you had we used uh, GX zero instead of the the one that was given by uh, Sun um because this had better singularities but it is still singular okay and what i gave you and all the definitions for the jacobian etc uh for the smooth case used that the hot structure was pure okay now when you have something singular the hot structure is not pure uh, it is mixed and I'm guessing, uh, I mean, I, I don't need to say this for the experts and maybe for the people who do not know this very well, you don't understand much from this right now, but uh, essentially the issue. Yeah. Was here, you had this, uh, you could always define a, a pure hot structure for something smooth and uh, you had when Mumford Newstead uh, had their result, they had a result which said that this is an isomorphism of pure hot structures. And then, you know, this result kind of uh, gave rise to, uh, well, 2G of the generators of, uh, uh, of Newstead. Uh, so uh, deep, deep inside, a lot of the things were using first that the moduli space is fine, but also that the moduli space is smooth and that there is a uh, pure hot structure. And the problem is that as soon as you get to something singular, uh, the hot structure is no longer pure, okay? So we needed something with good singularities because as long as the singularities are good, uh, it, it's you know, easier to describe the, uh, to, to, to work with the computations and there are specific results that tell you how to go from uh, the mixed hot structure of of the smooth thing to the uh, of the singular thing to the hot structure of the smooth thing, and um, so. right. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so this was you know the hot structure not being pure is one of the other big problems. So we need a morphism of mixed hot structures from. Um, the bad fiber, the, the, the cohomology of the bad fiber, uh, to the cohomology of the good fibers. Bad fiber meaning the singular fiber to the uh, good fibers, the smooth fibers. Okay, because for the smooth fibers, you already have all the results. Okay, and the idea here, uh, and I really apologize that this is hand wavy, but I don't have enough time to cover everything, so uh, I, I did not give you know the precise definitions. But uh, I can do that. That's not an issue. If you want, next week I can go through uh, the pure hot structure, limited mixed hot structure, mixed hot structure, uh, Steenbrink um, uh, specialization morphism, everything. But uh, the rough idea is the following: 
you had you wanted to connect the uh, the hot structure on the on the singular thing with the hot structure on the on the smooth thing okay and there is already a very good tool existing for this the tool is called limit mixed hot structures so what that means is that instead of looking at the hot structure of the smooth thing hot structure of the of the, of the singular thing what you do is that you look put, look at it as a family and you put the hot structure as a family okay uh, and what this tool the, has been you know has come up for is that you want to understand in, in more generality that if you have a killer manifold um, and it degenerates so like these uh, smooth curves degenerate to a, a nodal curve or the smooth moduli spaces degenerate to a, a singular moduli space what happens to the hot structure on the homology Okay. Again, many people worked on this. Uh, Griffiths, um, Steinbrink, Willing, Schmidt, many, many people. Um, and I apologize for not naming all of them, but uh, what Steinbrink and Schmidt uh, showed uh, is that there exists a morphism of mixed hot structures. So you, you can get a, a nice morphism of mixed hot structures that looks at the cohomology ring of the, of the singular thing and the cohomology ring of the smooth thing. And gives you a nice morphism between these, as long as as long as you are working with the limit mixed hot structure. Okay, so um, yeah, maybe I, I don't say too much more because it might be confusing. Uh, the problem is that in general, well, it's not a problem, but so it's already good that you have a morphism. Uh, but for a lot of the times to prove the results, what you need is to show something more, right? And uh, you need to understand the the uh, the hot structures, the generators, or whatever, for example, on this, and so you have it already on this, and so you use this morphism, but you have to do more things. Uh, first thing is that this specialization morphism is neither injective nor surjective, so it's not doesn't mean that if I have everything for the smooth fiber, then I automatically get it for the for the similar fiber. No. Uh, but what you can do is that you can show in certain cases. So for example, in the case of uh, the proof of the Hodge conjecture, we show that actually, if you restrict to algebraic classes, then this morphism uh, is uh, surjective. And that kind of plays a very key role in the, in the proof. Um, but yeah, I mean, for all the, all the problems, you'll have to look at this morphism, plus maybe neuron models, how to extend the family of intermediate Jacobians, whether this morphism is uh, is uh, surjective or injective or not, and something more, essentially. Uh, but yeah, I cannot say too much more about the proofs right now because uh, for that I need another hour. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Inder. Uh -huh. Are there questions for Inder? Uh, I'd like to ask a few questions. Hi, Inder. Hello. Nice talk. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Let me ask you this U of X naught, it, it's irreducible, right? U, yes, exactly. That's the thing. UX, uh, UX naught is irreducible, yes. But G of X naught has two components. Yes, yes. Okay. And yes. does the structure of G of X naught depend on the smoothing of X naught? Uh, no. No. Okay. No. It's given. Mm -hmm. no. And can you say something about, uh, as you have the theory, of this field, can you say something about the Hodge structure of uh, G of X naught? Yes. Yes. You. The, the thing is that the, the, uh, the Hodge structure of G X naught is, is mixed. And actually what you do is that you have uh, you have this limit mixed hot structures. So you do not consider it, the thing is that you do not look at it as um, hot structure. So, so this is, so, okay, so, so this is the basic philosophy of, of limit mixed hot structures, okay? So what you do is that you have things for any family, whether it's curves, moduli spaces, whatever, you have things which are, uh, which are going to be smooth, all of them, and then there's going to be one fiber which is going to be singular, okay? So whether it's the curves or the moduli spaces. Now the thing is, or anything else. Now, provided that this uh, singular thing is nice enough, as in 
SNCD. This is really, really helpful for the computation and for the uh, for uh, steam spring spectral sequences. Um, what you can do is, uh, you know, you can put something which is you put a you, you put a limit mixed hot structure on the whole family. So mm -hmm. normally, what you have is that if you have smooth things, okay. So for the singular things, you have a, let's say a, a mixed hot structure. For the smooth thing, you have a pure hot structure. You can kind of very easily take a trivial mixed hot structure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so if you just look at the trivial mixed hot structure of the of the smooth thing and the and the mixed hot structure of the singular thing, you do not get an isom you do not get a morphism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, you do not get a morphism of this uh, specialization morphism. No, mm -hmm. so you do not get a morphism of of uh, mixed hot structures. So to mm -hmm. get a morphism of mixed hot structures, don't look at them independently. This is the smooth one. This is the uh, this singular one. No, no. Look at it first as a punctured disc, the whole thing, okay? And then there is results by the lean, how you extend it to the whole disc. Okay? So, so, so you actually describe the limit uh, yes. cycles in, yes. uh, of, uh, on this special fiber. Yes. So does yes. this structure of the limit cycles, does it depend on the smoothing? Uh, no, 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 mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's very nice because the thing is that it doesn't really care this limit mixed hot structure. What exactly you are working with? Is it curves? Is it the is it moduli spaces? Is this no? It doesn't care. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so it's not that you do something different for the for the family of curves and do something different for the family of the, of the moduli spaces. No, no. It, it's this this result kind of doesn't doesn't look at the the actual thing. It just looks at you have this thing where everything is smooth other than the central fiber. So first you rem remove that point, you look at the open disc, you have, you put, uh, uh, you put a, a structure on the whole disc, okay, uh, using vector bundles actually, um, mm -hmm. pure and, uh, uh, so, so you put a pure uh, structure and, and a mixed structure, and then you kind of extend that to the whole thing. Right. Okay, and so that for the central thing, it comes as a limit, sorry. Right. And this G of X naught has two components. Both components dominate U of X naught. No, uh, no, no, no. It is. It's. It's very good. There is actually. It's exactly one. Com one component. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can. You can really write it down. Okay. So okay. there are two components. Uh, but yeah, it's. It's just one that mm -hmm. has this map. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this map. This is coming from. Uh, no. It's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, All right, thank you. Welcome. Are there more questions or comments for Inder? Well, I, I have a rather naive question. Um, so all your other constructions of UX naught is made for um, nodal curves. So is there anything there's particular that goes wrong with cuspidal ones? Or have you thought about doing something similar for us? No, no. Actually, actually, that is the thing. The thing is that um, I don't think this has been looked at uh, much for Caspitas. I, I could be wrong. I, I don't have the, uh, mm. a thorough history, uh, you know, of the, of, the, of the literature. I, I don't know very well. But the thing is that if I understand correctly, uh, and this somehow even came up in the uh, in, in in one of my talks. Even if I look at just you know curves with many components, singular curves with many components, I have some issues. Mm. Okay, with getting a relative moduli space, uh, and in general, as I said already, for something which is nodal, this UX zero to L uh, was first defined very uh, ad hocly, right? I mean, you just basically mm. said I take the torsion-free sheaves, where which is uh, going to have this uh, determinant outside the node. Yeah, so I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a good question. So mm -hmm. One should look into how you can get these things with fixed determinant in general. And you can also look at how maybe you can get things with fixed determinant in families, but I have not actually looked at it, so. All right, thank you. Are there more questions? Maybe I have a very uh, general question. So have, are there a similar results for a model of parabolic vector bundles? On this? Yes, 
the thing is uh, there are there are similar the thing is that uh, usha bosley does things with generalized parabolic bundles but there she goes for on the normalization so when you have the normalization uh, i mean the thing is that she, yeah she she can say quite a few things but uh, you do not have this relative moduli spaces okay because when you're normalizing you cannot put things in families so the the techniques are going to be different it's more like uh, you see not how the curve is moving etc but because you know if, if you have the normalization and and the curve um, you yeah it, it doesn't sit nicely in a family like it does for the uh, uh, for the relative uh, physical moduli space so when you're looking at parabolic bundles or so uh, if you're just looking at parabolic things in families smooth families uh, as in in the definition of uh, mehta sishadri where you're just having a smooth curve and maybe some points i think there are results uh, but if you're looking for singular, I mean, generalized parabolic bundles, I'm, I, don't, I don't know how it will work. I think for parabolic bundles, uh, there is a result, actually. Actually, uh, Carol, so there is a result by Bano, I think, Delbano, Sebastian Delbano, for parabolic bundles, for Torelli, for parabolic bundles. Okay, thank Hello. you. Okay. Hello. So yeah, so it, but it is it is for smooth curves. So it's for example like what what we were doing. You have a smooth curve. You have parabolic structure, uh, and then you want to ask exactly if you can have if uh, up to isomorphism. This is determined by the moduli space of parabolic bundles or something. The curve, and I think he has some results on that. But if you look at nodal things and generalized parabolic bundles, I, I don't know. Thank you, Inder. Um, are there more questions? So if not, let's uh, thank Inder again. I have uh, 